In this video, I will introduce dopamine pathways and their physiology relevant to antipsychotics pharmacology. The learning objective of this presentation is to understand basic concepts of dopaminergic pathways and their relevance to antipsychotic effects. Let's start by outlining the dopaminergic pathways. This image shows an integration of the four dopamine pathways I'll be talking about. It's essential that we're learning about dopamine projections before studying how antipsychotics modify dopaminergic neurotransmission. Blocking these pathways, antipsychotics can produce both therapeutic and adverse effects. The four pathways relevant to the pharmacology of antipsychotics in the treatment of schizophrenia are the mesolimbic pathway related to positive symptoms, the mesocortical pathway related to negative symptoms, the nigrostriatal pathway related to extrapyramidal symptoms and tardive dyskinesia, and the tuberinfantibular pathway related to hyperprolactinemia. As I just mentioned, the mesolimbic pathway is relevant to positive symptoms of schizophrenia. This pathway is made up of projections from the ventral tegmental area, which innervate many forebrain areas. The most important is the nucleus accumbens. Research suggests this system plays a key and complex role in motivation, emotions, reward and positive symptoms of schizophrenia. D2 antagonists reduce positive symptoms of schizophrenia. All antipsychotic drugs have the ability to reduce dopaminergic neurotransmission. A number of investigators propose that negative and cognitive symptoms of schizophrenia are associated with hyperfunction of the mesocortical pathway. This tract is made up of dopaminergic neurons that project from the ventral tegmental area to the prefrontal cortex. The mesocortical pathway is thought to be relevant to the physiology of cognition and executive function, mainly the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, and emotions and effect, mainly the ventromedial prefrontal cortex. So the implications are that hypofunction of the mesocortical pathway might be related to cognitive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia. The nigrostriatal dopamine pathway is linked to neurological side effects caused by D2 antagonists. The nigrostriatal system contains about 80% of the brain's dopamine. This tract projects from cell bodies in the pars compacta of the substantia nigra to terminals that innervate the striatum, caudate and butamen. This pathway is involved in motor planning. Dopaminergic neurons stimulate purposeful movement. D2 antagonism induces extrapyramidal symptoms. This is a case of first-generation antipsychotics. High-potency D2 antagonists, such as haloperidol, frequently cause pseudo-Parkinsonism. Dopaminergic projections in the tubular infantibular pathway influence prolactin release. Regarding anatomical considerations, this tract consists of dopaminergic projections from the hypothalamus more specifically the arcuate and periventricular nuclei, to the infundibular region, also in the hypothalamus, or median eminence. Dopamine is released into the portal circulation connecting the median eminence with the anterior pituitary gland. This is very important. The role of dopamine released in the tuber infundibular pathway is to tonically inhibit prolactin release. The main implication of this is that blockade of D2 receptors by drugs such as antipsychotics increases prolactin levels. The clinical consequences of hyperprolactinemia are discussed in other videos. In summary, hyperactivation from the ventral tegmental area to limbic areas might be related to positive symptoms of schizophrenia. Hypofunction of the mesocortical pathway might in part explain cognitive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia. D2 blockade of the nigrostriatal pathway can cause extrapyramidal symptoms. And D2 blockade of the tuberoinfundibular pathway increases prolactin blood levels.